Forget the library. Let's go to the stadium. Number three versus number 13 in Blacksburg. Marcus Vick, he's the current quarterback, the fellow Michael Vick. He's now the NFL, but he used to play there for Virginia Tech, and he used to do these kind of things, specifically against Boston College back in September of 2000. He is off to the races, 90 yards. This is best described, of course, as something special. He finished up with 210 yards rushing in that game. His team won 48-34. So back to Thursday night, Vautech leading 13-7. And look, there goes Marcus. Nice work. Brothers going, yeah, we need like 75 more yards, then we'd be equal. Next play, Vic takes off again. This time he'll gobble up eight yards inside the five-yard line. Very next play, how about a pass play? Vic rolls out, hits Josh Morgan for a three-yard touchdown. And then, of course, marks his mom's happy. You know what they say, if mama's happy, everybody's happy. Virginia Tech leads 20-7. to seven. Third quarter, Hokies leading 20-10. to 10. Vic finds his fullback, John Kinzer, and he's putting the high in hokey, 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 high! Up he goes, Tech, Tech, VPI, another look. That's a top play nominee. The kids call those mad hops. That would lead to a field goal, 23-10 in favor of the home team. Fourth quarter, now Quentin Porter. Wrapped up, still tries to throw it away. Bad decision, because Vince Hall is going to pick it off, and just like that, it is the 100th defensive or special teams touchdown in Tech's 19 years under Coach Frank Beamer, and they're going to win this thing by a count of 30 to 10. Tech rolls to 8-0, 5-0 in conference. Marcus Vick, a beast. 22 of 28, a career best 284 yards to the air, 52 more on the ground. Hokies win by 20, but outgained BC by 308 yards. 11 straight wins now on Thursday for the Gobblers, who, by the way, are also pretty good on Saturday afternoons. And to show you just how dominant the Hokies were against ACC newcomer Boston College, uh, not that Bot Tech is a grand old institution there in the conference, the Hokies outgained BC 212 yards to 27 in rushing and held onto the ball for nearly 20 more minutes than the Eagles. 212 rushing yards. Walk into Boone Pickens. Well, yeah, you do. Usually you do. You walk into Boone Pickens Stadium and you get a win. But on fourth and one, great call by Mike Gundy. Give him the play action. Al Pena to a wide, and I mean wide open Dewan Woods. Take another look at this fake, Mayday. What a terrific job of the fake. Carrying out an execution. And look how wide open Dewan Woods is. Going in for the score. For Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State not done. Julius Crossland going in and the Cowboys up 14-6. Still in the first after a Vince Young turnover. Here's Al Pena again, Luke. Well, he just fakes the hand off Keith and gets some real good blocking. But you can tell Texas wasn't being real physical, wasn't playing real hard at this stage. And it seemed as if everything, no tricks, all treats for the Pokes with a deflection. Go right to Woods, 30 yards, and the Pokes are up 28 to 9. This is a team that is winless in the Big 12. But in the third quarter, shades of last year, here goes Vince Young, Pontiac game-changing nominee. 81 yards for the leader. He is the heartbeat of the Longhorns. He went well over 200 yards rushing. Remember last year when Texas got down 35-7 to these guys and won 56-35? Young doing it again. Did it with his feet. Young started poorly throwing it, but finds Neil Tweedy here wound up. 15 of 32, 39, rushed for 261, and the crowd. And that's exactly what happened to Carl Durrell's team, or so it seemed. First quarter, Stanford. Now, this is an improving team. This team lost to UC Davis, and all of a sudden, they were putting it on UCLA when Trent Edwards found J.R. Lemon. And in a 17, it's 17 to 3. Nick Frank goes in 24 3 in the fourth quarter, and surely, surely the Bruins were too far behind this time. Or maybe not. Drew Olsen to Joe Cowan, and then under a minute to go in regulation. UCLA driving. This is fourth and one. This is UCLA season as it pertains to national championship dreams. And Olsen finds Cowan again. First and goal. UCLA now. Who scores the winning touchdown? Maurice touchdown. Drew all the time. Does all the, the last time. three come back. Every, is there any need to play overtime? You know UCLA's got this thing won at this point, don't you? Final ticks of regulation. Oh. Edwards gets sacked, so we would play the overtime. You know it's going to happen. Stanford kicked a field goal. That's like bringing a knife to a gunfight at this point. You don't have the right weapon. Touchdown is the weapon of choice. Drew Olsen, Brandon Brazil, ball game. Bruins do it again. 30 to 27. Look at these comebacks. 
double-digit deficits in the waning moments, Lou. What is it about a team? What's the characteristic of young men that allows UCLA to do this time and time and time and time again? Because they believe they can do it. They have a guy like Drew Olson who makes great plays. They have Maurice Drew, but I want to tell you, they can't keep doing it because it's going to catch up with them. Almost did against Stanford. Stanford his backup, but out of the gate it was Chris Leak, beleaguered, who started strong opening drive, 13 plays, 80 yards on a somersault for a 7-zip lead. They did a great job the first drive, first couple drives, moving Chris Leak around and giving him a chance to get outside of the pocket away from the pressure. Here he finds Tate Casey. That's right, he's a Ooh. tight end. He's a tight Ooh. end, Lee. They have a tight end on the team. Touchdown, and I tell you what, they used them very, very well in clutch situations, Florida did. Muhammad Massaquoi and the receiving end of Tarashinsky. Reggie Nelson delivers a big hit. 14-3 after a field goal. Watch this play. Tarashinsky falls down, gets the throwback from Thomas Brown. Great catch, great effort. They reviewed it. It stands. His knee was not down. The, you know, the only issue yeah, there Kirk, is about we, the knee. You know, we, when we talked about that. Was that planned, do you think, for him to fall down? I don't down? think so. I don't think he could time it that well, but the defense definitely noticed when he went down. They missed a field goal, however. Still a four-point game, 80 yards away with 3-10 to go, needing a miracle drive. On the way, you can see that Normally reliable kicker missing one. It was that kind of a day for the Georgia special teams completely outplayed by Florida. Here, Tarashinsky leveled on the last gasp, fourth down play, and that Florida defense getting it done. Shockley vowing to be back for the Auburn game in a couple of weeks, but the Gator defense once again very dominant. All the points they needed in the first nine minutes of the game. Tarashinsky, I thought, played better than those stats showed. But guys like Deshaun Wynn waking up the Georgia or the uh, Florida running game and bring a straight win. USC against Wazoo. First quarter, Matt Liner looking for Dwayne Jarrett. Jarrett happens to lead the nation in touchdown catches. And with that, he now has 13. Liner was 24, 34, 364 yards. Reggie Bush, the president, not perfect, puts it on the ground, but one of his cabinet members picking it up. Winston Justice, offensive lineman for the touchdown. That was real nice of him to be unselfish, allow an offensive lineman to score. How about these Trojan receivers? Oh, look at the moves right there by Jarrett. <laughs> Wide open, and then he, look at he toes the sidelines for the catch. And then Steve Smith, Jarrett, by the way, 11 catches, 200 yards. That's a career best. Smith didn't lose his balance, did catch a touchdown pass from Leinart, and then Lindale White, Lindale went for buck 55, scored a couple of times, and oh, they're just dogging him now. For Shizzle Televisum, SC. He's, he's in the hizzle. 55 13. Give him all Heisman Snoop. These are the BCS standings presented by Allstate. This is what it looked like coming into the weekend. And you would, su you would suppose with Texas struggle in the first half, they would lose enough support in the polls that SC would be able to move back to the top. But the bigger question, guys, no, I don't think it'll happen this week. But Texas probably lost a little support and at least opened the door for some of these voters to evaluate how Virginia Tech plays against Miami and then turned upside down. Northwestern a surprise against Michigan and Northwestern just with one conference loss. This play really turned the game around. Tyrell Sutton, they were moving. Leon Hall not only caused the fumble, he picked it up and housed it from 83 out. What a wonderful scoop six by Leon Hall. Johnny on the spot knocking it out and the presence of mind to pick it up and go Go all the way and take it in. Michigan takes the lead. 14 now. Michigan then having a hang on at 17 10. Chad Henney firing it to Mike Massey. 24 to 10. Brett Bazinet. Bazinet just been outstanding. Didn't necessarily have his best night all night, but going deep for Fillmore who makes the catch despite the pass interference call. 34 yards tremendous play by Fillmore. Michigan. Now getting threatened is 27-17, but Sean Crable getting after Bazinet. What a great job by Crable of not giving up on the play. Bazinet was forced out of the pocket, but he didn't give up. He was relentless on the play. 33. We expect a great defensive effort from Ohio State, but Minnesota, boy, Minnesota gave them all they wanted. This is Ted Ginn Jr. They gave a little misdirection. Look, you know Ginn's going to just press that A button and sprint. Uh, when he gets there, you better start singing the high state fight song because you aren't going to catch him. 100 yards. Again, took a punt back against Indiana last week. And now Antonio Pittman. Oh, Antonio Pittman's had trouble finding the end zone, but not there. 
67 yards out. It's been a calendar year. He got 157 carries between touchdowns coming in. That was his 12th carry. So the 169th time, the charm. Lawrence Maroney chased down and thrown down. This is on a fourth and two in Ohio State. The 24-17 lead, Troy Smith finding Anthony Gonzalez. Buckeyes put up 45, 45-31 is the final. Penn State and Purdue. Joe Pa and his team not looking ahead to Wisconsin next week. And Michael Robinson going up top for Deion Butler. Robinson got his team off to a good start at 180 yards of offense in the first half. Finished up with over 300. Brandon Snow going in 33-15. Purdue, by the way, will not go to a bowl this year. This is Wisconsin and Illinois. Wisconsin going into Happy Valley next week. And boy, Brian Calhoun had a fabulous day. He was outstanding as usual, carrying the load for Wisconsin the entire season. But what I love about him is look at the vision, picking up his blockers, going to the outside, letting his teammates help him, and then the speed to turn on the Jets and take it all away. That wasn't a blocker. That was an assassin. <laughs> Five touchdowns for Calhoun. 41-24 the final. Finished with 197 yards run. So we have three teams now in the Big Ten with one loss in conference play. Penn State and Wisconsin play next week in Happy Valley. Ohio State sitting there, their lone conference loss coming at the hands of the Nittany Lions. So Florida State, the Terps beat the Seminoles last year, but that was in the snake pit of Bird Stadium. This is in Doak Campbell. Willie Reed already with a 7-0 lead is going to try to give the Seminoles a little more, and he does. For Willie Reed, all he does is take it straight ahead. Perfect execution on the punt return, and he uses his speed to get to the outside. Seminoles lead this 14 to Joel Statham, backup quarterback from Maryland. Sam Hollenbach has been hurting. Statham started this game. Remember, he threw for over 300 in the victory last year, and he got hot in the second quarter, finding Derek Fenner. Maryland getting back in it, down 14-12. Now, just before halftime, here goes Statham again. Joe Joe Walker, Maryland, the big fella, Ralph Friedgen's team taking the lead in the third quarter, 24-14. Drew Weatherford throwing for the freshman, Greg Carr. Reigning ACC Rookie of the Week hauls it in. Weatherford 27 to 37, 264, but he can do it with his legs as well. He's got some great feet and some quicks, but the thing is, look at He puts the ball to the outside, stretches into the end zone. Smart, heady play by Drew Weatherford. 35-27 Seminoles survive. North Carolina and Miami. Uh, I think it's Miami. Uh, 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 they're using those retro uniforms that look a lot like South Florida. This is circa 1967, the Blue Bonnet Bowl team for the Canes. After that bad snap, Eric Winston kicks it out of the end zone. That's a penalty for kicking it, but the heels declined it and took the safety, got the ball back, and then Roddy McGill paid that off with a touchdown, and North Carolina bidding for the upset just as they knocked off the Canes last year. But, Lou, Tyrone Moss would have none of it. Tyrone Moss had a tremendous day, and just with good physical determination, goes on 19 yards down to the one-yard line. He would run it in for the touchdown, one of four on the day, and then Quatrine Hill, he must be sound in the kicking game. Locked. Miami, very adept at this. You know, Virginia Tech gets a lot of credit, rightfully so. Miami scores a lot of non-offensive touchdowns, but as mentioned, Moss had four of the offensive variety, ran for a career-high 195 yards. Miami 34-16, setting up their showdown with Virginia Tech coming up next week on ESPN. Charlie Wise, Notre Dame, they like him. They're going to keep him around. Seven games in, 10-year contract extension that'll start next year and run through 2015. Would you get one of those seven games into your deal? No, seven games in my first year. I got a week-to-week -week contract. <laughs> in Tennessee, Peyton Manning had his number retired. That's ironic since Steve Spurrier's always had Peyton Manning's number. He was 0 for 4 against him in college, 0-1 in the NFL. It looks like he's going to be 0-1 on number retirement night. When Blake Mitchell finds Sidney Rice, Gamecocks lead 7-0. And then Mitchell gets sacked in the end zone. Jason Hall coming up with the safety, and the Volunteers had a 12-7 lead. But Arian Foster, shades of the Alabama game, except there was really no big hit here. Foster just lost the football on his way to the end zone, and the Vols blow an opportunity to score. 12 7 games. Tennessee clinging to the lead. Mitchell, Rice, Gamecocks, 13 12. They missed the two point conversion. Now, still in the fourth, Tennessee needing a field goal, and James Will Hoyt delivers. Tennessee on top, 15 13. Phil's team trying to save themselves, but the Gamecocks on the ensuing possession. Fourth and eight, Josh Brown. 
Poe meets Leather, and the Gamecocks hang on to win on Rocky Top for the first time in 13. Ooh. Oh, it's not pretty in Knoxville. Alex Flanagan with Stephen Orr Spurrier after the game. We thought we had a chance to make history. If the ball bounced our way, and it did, we had some good things happen. So uh, we're excited. First time South Carolina's ever won here. So we did some history tonight. All right, well, what history was made tonight, aside from the first, first ever win? First win ever for so South Carolina. what about Carolina. for you and your program? What kind of history? Well, what does it mean? Well, we'd be one of the top three in the uh, East. So that's good for us, and uh, hadn't done that much. So maybe we can beat another top three. Who knows? Let's see, another top three in the East. Who, who is that that uh, <laughs> the Stephen Orr is talking? Oh, Florida hasn't played them yet. See, I know they lost to LSU, but the Tigers, this is a great sell on this fate by Courtney Taylor, Luke. Tremendous sell on the fake. It was the execution of that play that made the touchdown, not necessarily the conception. Devin Aroma shoot do. Oh, that Aroma shoot do that you do. And Obamanu. And Obamanu grabbing one from Brandon Cox. Auburn Cruz, 27 3. Ole Miss just can't find any offense whatsoever. Called the game of the century, but Oklahoma and Nebraska unranked in their meeting for the first time since 1961. But Adrian Peterson back looking healthy. His second touchdown put the Sooners up 14 0. They hadn't won in Lincoln since 87. Zach Taylor. I'm gonna get you. He got him. I'm gonna get you. He got him. Chijoke, I'm gonna get you. The pick six against Zach Taylor in Oklahoma up 21 3. This has been a Nebraska habit. They've fallen behind big in several games Texas Tech, Missouri, then Oklahoma. But Zach Taylor, the Norman, Oklahoma native and former Sooner fan, his dad played for OU, throwing a touchdown pass to Nate Swift. And Oh, you know Stoops has got that trick ration. Look at Garrett Hartley making like Elvis Peacock. Okay, that might be overstating it just a little bit. Just a little bit. But he did convert on fourth down in the next play. Kiwan Jones would house. Taking it to the corner. Look at the excellent blocking downfield, just like it was drawn up on the chalkboard. Kiwan Jones in for the score. But do you think Husker Nation is going to quit? No. No. Here's Zach Taylor. Corey Ross, more trickery. Swift catches another one, 31-24. 90 seconds to go. Nebraska with the ball in its own territory. Taylor has Swift open. Oh, he had him wide open, and he couldn't hit him. And Oklahoma hangs on, 31-24. Colorado and Kansas State. Buff Hunter, John Torp to Jermaine Morera, and Morera tries to pick it up. This is in the fourth quarter with a game tied at 20, and CU would take over. Morera left the game, would not return, and after he did with six seconds to go, two plays later, Mason Crosby, this guy, he might win the Groza. I'd be the best kicker in the country. His second field goal of 50-plus, Colorado, 23-20, to 20, and Maybe shocking everybody on the planet that Kansas is able to knock off Missouri after what the Tigers did to Nebraska last week. And because of these two things, Colorado Missouri play next week. The Buffs were able to win that game. The Big 12 North will be pretty much wrapped up. Colorado in first place in the Big 12 North. They're trying to become bowl eligible. Sunge, the State University of New Jersey up 14-0. Reggie Campbell showing serious speed for the Naval Academy. 60 yards. Rutgers all of a sudden see that lead cut down to 14 to 7 in the fourth quarter Rutgers answers Ray Rice right up the middle and Rutgers hasn't been to a bowl since 1978 but Greg Schiano's team wins his sixth game you look among the major conferences and Rutgers has a longer bowl drought than anyone but that's going to be ended this time going to be ended congratulations to them their fans their coaches their players Rutgers Vanderbilt got to face Pat Hill had never won at Hawaii 20 to 13 in the fourth quarter Wendell Mathis had 229 and three touchdowns on the day and as physical as Fresno State is this will be the biggest challenge that USC will face for the remainder of the year but you you do realize Fresno they State. play UCLA yes they play UCLA but Fresno State's physical and they're tough and they're mentally tough 27 13 Fresno State gets to win Just don't stroll into Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco and walk out of there with a victory easily Texas Tech and Baylor 
6-0 game. Paul Mosley cuts back, trying to get into the end zone. A huge stop for the Red Raiders. The score remains 6-0. That Baylor defense, seventh in the nation in pass efficiency, gave the Red Raiders trouble all day long. Cody Hodges, look at this. It's 6-0 in the fourth quarter. Hodges finds Robert Johnson. He turns on the Jets. Red Raiders score late. This game was much closer than this indicates. 28-0. Texas Tech back on the winning track. TCU only lost to SMU, taking on San Diego State. There is former Horned Frog, Ladanian Tomlinson, who now runs in San Diego. His team in town and seeing Kevin O'Connell go to Brett Swain, who just got lit up. Ooh. Oh, oh. <laughs> slobber knocker by Eric Buchanan. Corey Rogers takes the handoff and goes in. TCU goes on the road. They hang on. A bit of a tight game at the end. 23-20 is the final day of the Horned Frogs move to eight.